Unity is the reality, and it is always so. Separation doesn't exist. Every atom in every tree in every rock is in unity. Everything is in unity at all times. The Absolute is everywhere, and everywhere also means always. The truth is, you exist in unity, but you have to taste it, then you know it. You can talk all you want about the engine being on, but it's all theoretical until you turn the key and the car starts. That's when you really know what you're talking about. When you are conscious, you see truth, and your thoughts are connected to truth. When you don't taste unity, when you are not connected to your being, your thoughts don't express truth. You believe in, I think, instead of knowing, I am. When you look at things as if they're separate, you don't see reality. You see your thoughts about reality. The you that looks isn't real, and neither is what you see. But from unity you can look at diversity, and it is real, because you see it as it is, not separated from unity. The universe is not what we perceive it to be with our senses. It's not what we see and touch, or feel and think. Because in the realm of the senses, the actual meaning is missing. The universe has two aspects, and they both have to be considered. One is the obvious aspect, the observable universe we can observe with our senses. The other aspect is not observable with our senses, but it is realizable in our understanding. The earth is lit up by the sun and depends on the sun for its life and growth. Our inner world is illuminated and perceived by the light of understanding, consciousness. Both physical reality and that which we receive through our understanding need to be considered. If we put these two together, the observable universe and the realizable universe come together as the reality of the existing universe. From here we can come down in scale and look at ourselves. We see this body, this physical object in time and space, subject to time and space. But we also have an inner aspect. And there is not much communication between these two dimensions. Our inner psychological aspect doesn't really understand our physical aspect, nor can our body understand our inner aspect. If we are interested in living from the heart, we have to see that living is not just thinking or feeling. To understand anything, we have to see its different dimensions. The outermost layer of the heart is our feeling of like and dislike. That's the dimension we are familiar with. But in its innermost layer, in its highest dimension, the heart is our intimate connection to the source, to existence. It's what we are in reality. It is always present, always conscious. It perceives things directly and always sees things as they are. It sees through diversity and is always in unity. The substance of this heart is real conscience. In its very center, it sees everything as itself. It perceives the reality of everything that exists as itself. The heart itself is love, and everything it sees, it sees as itself. The heart is the existence of love, love that is always present. We don't create love, we receive it. Love refers to something ultimate, beginningless and endless, something not subject to time and space, but which includes time and space something not subject to phenomena, but which illuminates all phenomena. The heart has no here or there, because it is the ultimate and the totality of everything that exists. It is the moment, free from time, and yet penetrating it. The heart itself is the relationship between timeless and time, between the whole and the part. Relating doesn't mean thinking. It doesn't mean seeing with your eyes. When we look at someone, it doesn't mean we're relating to them. We see them through the filter of our associations, our ideas, our thoughts. We don't relate to that person. We relate to the image of them inside our head. And we think that's them. So we never have a chance to see that person as they are. But the real heart is free of associations. So it sees things as they are. If you see something or someone as they are, you see they are not separate from you. 
This is how you can begin to understand the law of unity. There is one existence, one universe, one consciousness, one life, one energy. In the heart, everything is one. The heart doesn't see an opposition. It includes opposites within itself and transforms everything into the essential energy of love. We think love means having something or someone to love. To us, something means something separate from the totality. In unity, there is no thing. There is only isness. There is one is, which is the isness of everything. The manifestation of that is is the universe, filled with variety. Your body has trillions of cells. No two are identical. The creative energy of the universe manifests in unity, but not in uniformity. There are countless drops of water in the ocean, but each is a particular drop. We are particular for a reason. That's why we were created this way. We each have to relate to ourself in order to enter into unity. We cannot have any understanding of the universe without self-understanding. You have to understand yourself in order to find your relationship to the whole. That which you think you are, you are not. That which you feel you are, you are not. That which your senses tell you you are, you are not. If none of these three can give you the reality of yourself, where does that leave you? What if your mind, feelings, and body work together with a common aim? When all three wish to know what you are, who you are, you become familiar with a different current of energy that you never knew before. When you're connected to this energy, you see that what your mind, feelings, and senses perceived was imaginary. They saw everything in sleep, like a dream. This new energy is another dimension of consciousness. When body, mind, and feelings come together, you see that you are not your thoughts, your feelings, or your body and its senses. You are that which is conscious of the mind, feelings, and senses. You can see that your thoughts, feelings, and sensations are events that come and go. But you are not an event, because you are conscious of the events. When this consciousness is present, you are living from the heart. The innermost dimension of the heart is awareness. It's not something you strive to acquire. To receive it, you let go. You become an ordinary person, living life, but seeing events as events, and reality as reality. That doesn't happen unless the heart is open to the source. Living from the heart means receptivity to the source. That's why your real heart is your intimate connection to the Absolute, to awareness. We can start where we are. Like everyone else, we go through life with eyes closed, always trying to figure everything out, living inside our head. So we're not living life, we're just passing through it. Seeing that is our starting point. The key is to take the first step. Our mind makes comments about everything and everyone we see, and our feelings react according to our subjective commentary. As soon as you see this automatic process, you can say to yourself, I wish that person or situation well. Everyone and everything deserves your well-wishing. In the unified energy of this moment, there is the heart. There is only one way to bring reality to what you perceive, by including yourself in what you see. Reality is not outside of you. If you want reality, you yourself have to be in it. You have to taste your own existence while you see the existence of phenomena. Then both you and the phenomena are real.